Okay, now I know what you mean. Yes. You're, it's about piping, huh? It's about okay. piping. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we're going to be talking about the importance of proper pipe dimensioning and hydraulics. Yeah. We, huh? will, we will show you the magic ruler. We will talk about overflow pools, right balance tank, how to backwash overflow <coughs> best. And we talk about economy mode to show how much of, of money you can save for your customers and energy. And, you know, we are green. We're a green uh, company, so this is what we want to do. Exciting, Let's start. exciting stuff. Yeah. So, as always, short instructions. You have, uh, you have the possibility to participate. Um, you have two options. Either use the Q&A function that you find to write your questions uh, down. We will get to it at the end of the session. Or use the chat function here to leave us feedback and suggestions, which we will read afterwards and uh, this is helpful information yeah. for us to improve and make some changes. Absolutely. Sorry, the last time we messed it up in a way with the chat, but we will do better. Okay, what else? Great. So also here, um, very important. You always have an opportunity to replay our sessions. Uh, they are on our website for a period of seven days. Uh, Florent will put them on uh, today and then... Tonight. Or tonight, yes. And then after a week, they will be replaced with the new ones. Uh, you also have an option up here uh, on our website. You can download the program with the 10 sessions and you can also, very important, download the PDF version of our presentations. That kind of looks like this, uh, where you can take your notes. You can do this before, after, or while our presentation. Okay, great. Ready? Yeah. Good. The pyramid. Yeah, remember the pyramid. What's important that it stands like this, like Egyptian and not like next this. one like this and this is all about filtration and hydraulics and we talked in the first two lessons about hydraulics and filtration already and let's make a short review on yes, this yes let's do this so yeah, yeah. let's go to lesson uh, session number one and we will do it in three simple steps okay. step number one step number one <laughs> Always have a turnover time of four to six hours. Don't go, don't go below that. Minimum three to four cycles per day in a 24-hour filtration. Yeah, mode. best 24-hour huh? filtration, variable speed, just do it. Step number two, always equal distribution. Stack on time, as you see here, are collectors with 0.5, one meters per second. We are coming to this. Step number three, believing is good, control is better. Use a flow meter because you will always know where you are. My wife does this all the time. Yes. Okay. Good. Session number one. Session number two in three simple steps. Step number one. The lower the uh, filtration velocity, the better your filtration performance. Yeah. It's 30 meters per hour with our recommendation daytime, 15 to 20 nighttime. Step number two. Hardware and software. AFM is the best software you can get. It will work in an even bad hardware, but it will work much better in a great soft in a great hardware. Sorry, my friend Philip, I have to correct you. You're wrong. Okay. AFM is not the best software. It's the very best software. I if was looking says for it, this opportunity yes. for <laughs> for quite some time. Good. So step That's number three. That's internal joke. Sorry. Step uh, number three. Yeah. What comes in must come out. Your filtration is like a bin. You know, so you fill it, and sometimes you have to 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 empty it. To empty it properly, you need a bad expansion. Minimum fifteen percent, better twenty five, and that for you need a proper backwash velocity, uh, AFM forty or higher, sand fifty to sixty. That was the two section. Okay, go to let's go. Let's, let's start to, to what we are talking. Size matters, and that's especially in piping, right? Yes. So let's go to piping. Philip, please explain us what is. Piping. Okay, you know one thing I've learned that uh, you know mostly in the pool industry, people are working with the external diameter D. Absolutely, right? everybody, at least in Europe, you know, they speak about fifty millimeter, sixty-three millimeter, seventy-five millimeter. This is the outside diameter. Yes. Please show it uh, to us. It's here, here. and it's outside. here. Huh? Outside. But in water treatment and for proper uh, calculation of hydraulics, you use the inner diameter. And this is DN. You see it. Very, very, very simple. You will see this. 
because this gives you really the, how you call it, prime cross section? The cross section, yes. And we take or here surface area surface of the. Area. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. simple to calculate, yeah. two uh, radius multiplied with radius multiplied with T, and then you get it. And this is at a certain flow, gives you the speed in the pipe. Huh? Yes, This exactly. gives you the speed in the pipe. It all sounds very complicated. You will see later on how easy it is if you follow the rules. But maybe, Philip, you can lead us to two to examples. Yeah, okay. So we have, uh, let's say we have a DN40, D50, or an inch and a half pipe. Yeah, huh? uh, maybe to start. Now we are calculating, you know, what is the flow rate if you do not want to exceed two meters per second of speed. You will see later on why this two meter is a kind of max, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we have uh, 40 millimeter inside diameter. This gives us a cross section of 13 centimeters square. You're if good we at mathematics. Have, I'm absolutely good at this. Yeah. So if you have a pipe velocity of two meters, your flow rate will be nine meter cubes per so hour. Up to nine meters you can run that you're not above two meters per second. Okay, uh, now the price difference between uh, uh, D and 40, which is D 50 millimeter, uh, outside 50 millimeter or one and a half inch to a two inch pipe, 63 millimeter, D and 50, so the lower part, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's very small. So yeah. We'll but see. it will have quite a difference. And we have a calculation later, right? Yeah, to yeah. show this difference. Yeah. Huh? But go uh, uh, one, one, one up go again. Back. Yeah. You know, here okay. we have seen uh, one and a half inch, 13 square, square centimeters. Here, 20. Very small price difference. Much more surface. That will allow if you that will allow that you can run this pipe up to 15 cubic meters per hour of flow rate, and you're still on two meters per second. I mean, you can go lower, but that would be kind of oh, max. That's 65% difference. It's huge. Is it? Yes. Okay, you're huge. much better in calculation. Fast calculator. Yeah. So, so, so what happens when the, the pipe diameter gets too small then? Yeah, if the pipe diameter gets too small, your speed will become fast. And with this, the resistance, because, you know, the, the, the faster the, the water moves in the pipe, the more friction you get. And the friction creates the pressure loss. And this is where you have to compensate with energy. So the more friction you have, the more pressure loss, the more energy you need. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So What's this this has, this has yeah. obviously then also a negative impact on backwash velocity, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I think, yeah, three, three, three steps again. Too high. If you have too high speed, mm -hmm. you have too high pressure losses. And with this, let me take, so with the, the first one, too high pressure loss, and let's combine it with this point, and with this too high energy consumption. Payback in a year, if you go 50 millimeter, if you go to 63 millimeter instead of 50 millimeter. We will show you this, we, we will make an example later on. But also what you mentioned very often, you know, you have too high speed, too small uh, pipes, and that for you cannot backwash your filter properly to get your bad expansion. Yes. We have a lot of small and, price and, and the difference in price. It's small. It's nothing. Yep. You know, remember, it's like with the filters, 500 millimeter and 600 millimeter uh, filters. So uh, maybe I, I start with this, you know, many people I have met, you know, they said, uh, well, Dominic, uh, I do one and a half inch and I said, this is wrong. No, no, because, you know, here, for instance, my spec pump has here one and a half inch. So this is, this is the limiting factor, and this is why it doesn't make sense to go bigger. So many people think it's the bottleneck which gives the size, and this is completely wrong. The truth is, so Philip. Pipe sizing is really driven by three factors. One yes. is length of the pipe. The longer the pipe, the, the higher is my pressure loss. Exactly. Your pressure loss is in one meter different than if you have one on the meter pipe. Yep. So length matters. And then the main factor is speed. And uh, already now, and that's a really good, uh, important takeaway on this speed, we will show you later on how to calculate. You know, on the suction side, suction side means before the pump, your speed should be between one to 1 1.5. You can go lower, don't go higher. On the pressure side, it's 1.5 meters to two meters per second. This is fast, you know, two meters per second. This is, huh? 
and the overflow return, we have a, a, a look later on. Philip, why a lower velocity on the suction than on the pressure? You know that? Uh, you know, I think you told me this, or yeah. didn't we talk about this yeah. in one of the earlier sessions? Yeah. Tell me again. Yeah. Okay, to suck is more heavy than to blow. You know, it's very, very... That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know, and that's easy to explain. You know, the max suction, you know, the max vacuum you can produce is one bar. You will never achieve it, but mm -hmm. that's, that's theoretically the maximum. Now, on the pressure side, you can create the pressure, you know, 100 meters, 10 bars, 100 bars. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not the issue. But the max vacuum you can do is uh, uh, one, one atmosphere. So here, uh, really, that's why the suction, you know, if you have too much of resistance, your, your pump will run in cavitation. So length, speed, and turbulence yes. is so third. It's, huh? it's really the length and the turbulence, but it's dominated by the speed. By the speed. Huh? Uh, that's yeah. the, the, the main factor. Now, what we do mean with turbulence, these are the fittings. You know, if you have a straight line, it's not like you have an angle of 90 degrees or a T or whatever. That gives turbulence. That gives friction and with the friction it gets a uh, 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 pressure drop and energy that you have to, to compensate yep. for it yep. okay really important length speed turbulence it's really really about the speed if you follow the speed rules our speed rules you're good Let's go in an example. Should I, I do this? this? Yeah you're better okay, at you know, I'm a simple guy and I like simple things so when I saw this first uh, I got a little bit nervous right but you know you look at this and you work with it and you really start to understand. So yeah. let, me, let me walk you through. Mm -hmm. um, we have a horizontal axis here, which uh, if, gives us the flow rate in meter cubes per hour. Then we have the vertical axis here, which gives us the pressure loss per meter expressed in millibars. Now, 1,000 millibar is one bar. 100 millibar is 0 0.1 bar. But we talk today because of the 0, 0.0, that's complicated. This is why we talk now in millibars. Yes. Two more things, important things we see in this graph. One are these, uh, these uh, diagonal lines here, which are the different pipe sizes. You know, in this example, we're going to be using inch and a half, um, two. two inch and two and a half inches. And then on this side here in yellow, you will see, or you can, you can uh, uh, identify the pipe velocity that you have. So let me, let's take an example. We have a flow rate of a pool with 13 meter cubes per hour. So I go to 13 meter cubes per hour. Um, we have a piping of DN40. So I go up to DN40. This gives me a pressure loss of 10 millibar per meter. And it tells me my pipe velocity is two meters per second. So that's what I see here. Two meters per second, a little bit higher, actually 2.2. My pressure loss is 10 millibars per meter. That's what I see here. How so does that, that look? 10 meters, 100 yes. millibars. 100 meters, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 1,000 millibar, one yeah, bar. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. If we go a size up to a two inch pipe here, then I still have the same uh, flow rate. I go up. My pressure loss here is now 3.5 millibar, and my pipe velocity is 1.4 meters. That's what you see here 1.4 meters, 3.5 millibar per meter uh, pipe length. That's my um, pressure loss. And now, if I go uh, even bigger pipe, the N65, I go here. This gives me a reading of 1.8 millibar pressure loss and a pipe velocity of one meter. You got it. You got it. And you see here already, you know, if you drop the speed in your pipe by 50%, if you half it, your pressure loss goes down by a factor of four. That's in English in, in quadru quadruple. Quadruple. Uh, quadruple. Difficult for me to tell. Yep. Difficult for, for me to tell. Yep. But that's really the learning. Yep. Now, really, look at this. You don't have really to understand. It's great if you understand this, and uh, because then you, 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 you got it. Uh, but you will see then we can make it in, in a simple version. Yes. So this is speed and length for pipes. Yes. 
Now the next, you explain that to me. This is speed and turbulence, exactly. right? Exactly. So if you're talking about turbulence, and you see this a little bit in this animation, right? Here there is no turbulence. Here we have a lot of turbulence. You have a lot of water. Here you have no water. So turbulence, as I said, creates friction and creates pressure loss. Let me explain this table. It's table, right? Mm -hmm. Here, um, he, uh, here. We have the velocity again in meters per second. So we have one example for one meter and we have it here for two meter. And here we have the pressure drop in millibar for a fitting, which has a, a, a pressure loss coefficient of one, a lambda of one. That's the pressure loss coefficient. That would mean, you know, because there are fittings which are like these who have a high pressure loss and others which have less of pressure loss, but I, I will explain you this. But let's assume to standardize with a pressure, we have this lambda is one. Then you have with one meters per second, you have a pressure loss in this fitting of five millibars. Same fitting with two meters per second, you have 20 millibars. Again, what we have seen, if you double the speed, the pressure drop increases by a factor of four. If you double the speed, the pressure drop increases by a factor of four. Quadruples. Quadruples. Quick question. Just, sure. just to know uh, if, um, uh, if the filtrations, if the pipe velocity is four, four meters per second, yeah. what would be in this case the, the pressure loss? Do you know it? I know, I'm so smart. Yeah. Four times higher. Four times. Four times higher. Again, you know, the, the 20, if that becomes four, this becomes 80. 80. 80. Okay, good, thanks. <laughs> I'm sure you did not know that. Okay, let's look at the different uh, fittings. We have here the 90 degree angle that everybody knows. This has not a lambda of one, this has a lambda of 0.8. Or if you go for an elbow, you know, because it's less friction, you only have a pressure uh, loss, a lambda of 0.5. And the other side, if you have a T, you know, where you go in and then you split it, you have a lambda of 1.5. Let's go again in the example. And for this time, we use here the two meters per second, which is 20 millibar pressure loss with a lambda of one. So I take this 20, I go to the angle with a lambda of 0.8, and then I take the 20 and I multiply it with 0.8 because the angle only has a lambda of 0.8 and not of one. 20 would be one and 16 would be this coefficient lambda 0.8. This is why I get with this 90 degree angle to 16 millibars of pressure loss. And if I have 10 of them, it's 160 millibars. If I go for an elbow, again, we have the 20 for a lambda of one. We multiply the lambda of one with 0.8, we get to 10. And if we go to the T again, 20 millibar with a lambda of one, we multiply it with 1.5, we get to 30. And here you have the 45 uh, degrees angle. You see how that is. Now again, uh, so, in general, it's better to use elbows or two times a uh, uh, 45 uh, uh, degree angle, angle, yeah. degree yeah. angle yeah. than a 90. Your, yeah. your, your, German, your English is so much better yeah. than mine. We're doing and, this together, see? Oh, yeah, yeah. We are friends. So, just to give you, but it's really about the speed who makes the difference. Look here, this example, one meters per second and two meters per second. Here with a lambda of one, five to 20. This is what we have seen before. Angles, 90 degrees, four millibar or 60 millibars. Or here with the T, 7.5 to 30 millibars. So it's really the speed is, is the, the, the factor. So what we learned, it's the length of the pipe that Philip explained. And I hope I, I, I achieved to explain you the friction with the fittings. This is where you have to, to go on this co coefficient, you get the general number with lambda yeah. one, and then you multiply it with the pressure loss coefficient. All clear? Please put hands up. No, leave it. <laughs> you, you got it? Yeah. He Our mother Florent, he got Good. it, so great. So, uh, so should we 
bring it together now. Yeah. We have pipes, we have fittings. So let's do a calculation. I give you, huh? I give okay, you the command. Great. So for example, we have a flow rate here in this uh, example of, again, 13 meter cubes per hour. Yeah, we always keep huh? the same. Yeah. We keep it the same. We have a total pipe length of 30 meters and we are using 10 90 degree angles. As an example. As a reminder, a 10 90 degree angle has a lambda of 0 0.8. So we go back to my favorite table here, yeah. right? So we have, uh, let's start with DN40. We have 13 meter cubes per hour. DN40, we go up here, gives us a pressure loss of 10 millibars per meter, right? Which is this number here. Yeah. So we have a total of 30 meters times 30 equals 300 millibars. You got it. It's 10 millibars per meter. And we have 30 meter, 300 millibars. I, exactly. Even I, I understood this. Yes, you did perfect. it really well. This is easy. You, you see, did it really it's well. Easy. Now, next, let's talk about the fittings, yeah. turbulence, right? Yeah. We have, uh, if we go over here to this chart here, uh, we identified uh, speed, pipe velocity of two meters. This gives us a pressure loss of 20 millibars, millibars. right? Yeah. So we take 20 millibars times the coefficient of 0.8. Yeah, which is the lambda for the 90 exactly. degree angle. And then we have 10 of them. Yeah, and this is 160 millibar. 160. Together, 460 millibar that we round to half a bar. Now, if we go a size up, what would happen? A speed will go down. Speed will go down. So let's take a look at that, right? And pressure loss will go ah, down. Ah, next size. So now we're talking, let's go to a two inch pipe. Yes. Speed goes down to 1.4 meters. Yeah, show right? it quickly there. Yes. So no, we have, uh, on, the, on the graph. We uh, are over here yes. at this point now, right? So 1.4 meters, yeah. 3.5 millibar pressure loss. Same calculation as before, but now we have 1.4 meters, so... Uh, maybe first, then we have this 3.5 millibars mm -hmm. per meter. We have 30 meters, 105 millibars. 105 for the pipe. Huh? Uh, that's the pipe. Yep. And then now the fittings. Now, Philip has shown 1.4 that we find in the table. Uh, pressure loss, 9.8 millibar. We multiply this again with 0.8, and then we have the pressure loss for in one. millibar for 1. We multiply it with 10, Nine. 80. Eight. Together, 185, so 200. Look, so look at that difference, huh? Yeah, it's, it's massive. Massive. It's massive. You know, yeah, it's massive. Yes. Do we have one more? Yes. So what happens if we go yeah. to a two and a half pipe? Yeah, maybe we do not calculate yeah. it all. But no, you no. see here we have two meters per second with 460 millibars. We have one meters per second with the two and a half inch, the DN 65, 75 mm -hmm. millimeter outside, 94. You see what huge difference, factor of four. Huge. Factor of four. Okay, so this is just big others. pools. Huh? Yeah. Big pools. I take the big pools. Yes. I like it big. Uh, big pools here again, uh, same thing. And we, we do not make all the calculation again. We just want to show it also works in, 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 in big uh, ones. So we have in this case a flow rate of 72 cubic meters per hour. By the way, we got this from our friends from Spain. Patrick and his team. Thank you, Patrick. You're, you guys are great. So 72 cubic meters per hour of flow rates, 30 meters piping like we had before. Again, 10 angles and the pipe size DN100. So we can calculate this with the magic ruler that we will see in a minute. Our speed is 2.5 meters per second. And then we do all the math and we get to 450 millibars of a bar. Huh? This is something that Patrick did not like and his team. So same example, again, 72 cubic meters per hour of flow rate, 30 meters, 10, 10 angles, but this time a DN150 piping. DN150 piping gives us a speed of 1.2 and you calculate all this together and you get 85 millibars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a factor five lower. You know, this is, this is 400 uh, millibars, 0 0.4 bars of difference. These are big pumps. <laughs> These are big pumps yeah, we, and they will run 24 hours, you know, all the year long for many, many years. So it's worth to invest a little bit more in this piping. If you don't do it, 
you waste energy and you cheat your customer. So make your pipe size right. Maybe you're a little bit more expensive, but explain it that you do a great project for your customer and he will have a payback of one year, sometimes two, but usually one. Go for a lower speed. And uh, yeah, we will do another example, really, with, with, with figures to, to prove you the payback after this. But first now you think, well, these guys, they're talking about flow rates. How do I find out flow rates? There are two, three possibilities. You can calculate it shitty hard. Uh, number two, you go uh, to this uh, to this very app. modern yeah. tools. Uh, use an app, uh, FlowCalc, for example, from GF, and you put this in. But as you know, I'm not the IT guy. I'm more the caveman guy. You go for the magic ruler, the Dryden ruler. This is, by the way, also that we give you as a present. If you join all the 10 sessions, and you ask for the certificate, to each certificate we will add one magic ruler. Yes. Uh, it's not that expensive, but it gives a big, big value. And you know, we are Swiss, Swiss Scottish company. That means we, we don't like to spend money. We are geizig. What is geizig? Um, uh, tight. 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 We are very tight. Scottish, yeah. Swiss. Yeah, that's, right? that's, so that's, that's the worst. That's DNA. Yeah, that's, that's the worst that you can have. Uh, but uh, this here is so much worse. doesn't cost a lot, but it's so much worse. Yep. Philip, you will explain us this. Yes, okay. So let me tell you why this is such a great tool uh, for the calculation of pipe diameters. Huh? So here on the, on the one side, you will find uh, great information. For example, uh, a short user manual, or it's basically a step-by-step -step, uh, explanation on how to use this. And we use it, uh, we do it in three languages, right? So uh, on, if you look at it at the top, then you will find your flow rate in either meter cubes per hour or liters per seconds, whatever you prefer. And you will find on this uh, piece that you can move also, you will find the DN or the inner diameter of the pipe. Um, you will then also be able to see the pipe velocity in meters per second. So these are the three uh, parameters that you find on this, uh, on this calculator. So let me show you how this works. Um, first, what you will do is you choose your flow rate. For example, this example, we have a flow rate of 15 meter cubes per hour. Oh, or, I Huh? Or two liters per second. Yes. Okay. Huh? Great. This is how you do it. Very, this is how you do it. You very slide sophisticated. It inside out to adjust to the flow rate that you have in your system. Second, you choose your velocity. So you move your slider. And remember, suction side one to one point five, pressure side one point five to two. It's again on the instruction. You find it on the instruction if you have forgotten it. But if you have to, to, to keep a number today, it's exactly these two numbers. Never keep them and never forget them anymore. If you forget once inside, outside, I mean, you can see it on the, right. the left exactly. side as a reminder. But this is the 1 to 1.5 suction side, 1.5 to 2 meters. That's from this today. You have it in your mind, in your heart, in your whatever. And it's on here as well. Exactly. But this is you have to know. Yeah. So what do we do next? And then you say, okay, I'm on the suction side. I need a pipe size, which gives me a velocity between 1.5 to 1. And this is here DN65, which is 75 millimeter outside or for my British uh, friends, two and a half inch. So in case I forgot, I have it over here. DN65 equals 75 millimeters. Yeah. Perfect. We have a little bit too rough. We are, we are good in timing. That's but simple. We shouldn't, huh? we shouldn't it's take, that simple. We shouldn't take too okay. much. Yeah. Let's summarize. Huh? Yeah. So with this, you know, for, forget all forget all the, the fittings and the lambda and all this, uh, sh uh, not shit, this, all this information, go for, 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 for these rules here. Go for these rules this here. This is all you need. That's all, all you need. It's all you need. You know, it, we wanted to show you how complicated is the reality and how simply you can manage this reality. And the only thing, suction side, 1 to 1.5 meters per second, pressure side, 1.5 to 2 meters per second. Philip, when do we go on the suction side on 1 instead of 1.5? You know, that's a good question. I guess if we have very long pipes, right, and uh, a lot of 
fittings, a lot of turbulence, then we go to the lower side. Yeah, huh? but you are an instructor here. You should not believe yes. or guessing. Well, you should know, but you're well. absolutely right. Absolutely right, yeah. No, that's exactly, you know, but it's, uh, yeah. You, you, you will manage it, you will manage it. Let's, we will see it in a few more things. So again, this all comes from Spain. Thank you, Patrick and Armando and Marcelo and your team. No, they made it really well. Uh, so here, for instance, the gravity return line to the balance tank. I hope that's the right uh, uh, pronunciation. Yeah. Here you go in a very low speed, 0.5 meters per second. Why? Because it's gravity. Now this is, you can go a little bit higher, like 0.7, even maybe 0.9, if you have a steep slope. slope if you have slope, slope yeah. but that creates then also some noise. You know, or if you have many 90 degrees angles, this always uh, goes down. This is gravity flow. If you want to go on the safe side, 0.5 meters per second. I know each big, big pipe are more cost, but yeah. Then uh, on the suction side, for the third time, 1 to 1.5 meters per second. Really, this is a number you have to keep in mind. If you have collectors that we have here, then one, 0 0.5, maximum one meters per second. 0 0.5 would be better, would be safer that you get, that's from session number one. Uh, remember that you have an equal flow on each pump. Different to here, different to here, this is stack on. I mean, this, the, here you can work with one meter or even 1.5 meters per second. Okay, the fitting here, probably more on one meter than here, mm -hmm. 1.5, that would be mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so collector, yep. yep. the collector, just to have an equal, equal distribution instead of stack on to this. And then finally, uh, pressure side. Pressure side is everything that comes after the pump, 1.5 to two meters per second. Huh? And you know, sometimes you are on 1.8 and, uh, and that's fine, you know, because you only have so much to, to choose. Let's summarize, huh? Yep. And then we You're good in summarizing. Pools, You're good right? in, in summarizing. Okay, so takeaway is pipe speed is important. So if you double your pipe speed, your energy consumption, your uh, uh, pressure loss will quadruple. Okay, and I'm not going to mention it for the fifth time, but suction pipe is 1 to 1.5 meters. Pressure pipe, 1.5 to 2 meters. No, it's good that you tell the people, you know, it's, it's propaganda, you know, it's brainwashing. 1 to 1.5 suction, 1.5 to 2 pressure. And it's all on here. It's all on and here. And you're going to get one if you attend yeah. all sessions. So just follow the rules. Maybe uh, I, I added here this uh, as a special case. You know, if you have a contact chat, uh, what is huh? Countercurrent. Countercurrent. Yeah. Countercurrent. You know, mostly of these countercurrents, you have the motor directly behind. But in some goods, some sophisticated, you have on this side, you have the, the pressure, you know, where you have to come to current and you have the aspiration on the other side and you have to motor down into your technical room. And that means you have a lot of sizes. Now, of course, you can go with here the calculator and then you will end up with massive big pipes and uh, yeah, nobody will pay for it. But you have a high speed, you know, because they have, do we have it? No, we don't have it. You know, you have here 60 cubic meters per hour. What you can do, take two flexible pipes, two and a half inch, 75 millimeters outside, two times. So you have in each 30 cubic meters per hour, your velocity will be 2.5 meters per second. You can calculate it with the ruler. You have no fittings, try to avoid any fittings and then you're okay. Even if you have 20 uh, meters of pipeline and budget wise, you're, you're small. You're right. But if you do this, he was I'm right. always right. Was right. Uh, that's my problem. But if you do this, you know, if, if a uh, uh, two inch pipe on both sides, you will get instead of 60 cubic meters per hour, you will end up with 30. And then your customer is not happy. I had one case here in Switzerland, you know, where uh, the owner refused to pay 50,000 euros to the pool builder because he messed it up this and he had to correct it. Uh, it was, it was terrible. They go to court, huh? Yeah. So All don't do things. this. Yeah. Um, yeah. We said small investment, big difference. And, uh, yeah, you remember we calculated this example here where we said, you know, the 13 cubic meters, one with, 
uh, one and a half inch and one with two inch, uh, 460 bars, 180 millibars. So pressure different, different in, in pressure drop, 0 0.3 bars. Mm -hmm. And we told you payback in one year and Philip said, prove it. Yes. And I do. I don't always believe him. So he needs to prove yeah, it. Yeah, that's like my wife. She never believes me. Okay. Um, what is this? Yeah. These are pump curves from spec. This is now single speed, but it's with variable speed. It's exactly the same. You know, we have here again our famous. Uh, 13. We have our famous uh, uh, flow rate of 13 cubic meters per hour. We can choose one and a half inch or two inch. Now here, let's say here we we only get to eight meters per hour, and we can use a delta 13. If we go to 50 millimeter, one and a half inch, we have to add three meters more, 300 millibars more. And then we end up with a delta 17. You see, this is this, this difference that we had before. You know, pressure loss with 50 millimeter compared to uh, 63 millimeter, 300 millibars more. This is then what you have to compensate here. So if one works on eight meters, the other has to go to uh, 11. 11. Shit. Okay. So Delta 13, 630 watts. Delta 70, 870 watts electrical consumption. So difference 240 watts. And we want to filter 24 hours, 150 days outdoor pool, uh, 20 cents per kilowatt, 173 euros. The price difference, and we took here Swiss prices, and believe me, they Swiss list prices and customer prices, and we said, okay, the price difference for an angle, 90 degree angle, 50 millimeter to 63 millimeter, the price difference is two euro. So 10 angles, 20 euro. Mm -hmm. And the piping, you know, uh, four euros per meter, 50 millimeter to 63 millimeter, four euro more i guess in some of the countries you you Dollars. buy it yeah it's yeah, it's it's, less, it's, it's, it's half yeah. it's half of it so we have an extra investment in piping of 120 plus 20 140 extra investment and if we do this investment we have a saving for your customer of 173 euros payback in one year if it's a uh, uh, indoor pools, 24, uh, uh, 12 months, mm -hmm. it's half a year. So please, my dear pool builders out there and, and experts and everything, 50 millimeters should be forbidden. You should go always on 63 millimeters in private pools. And then you're safe. I mean, price difference is nothing as you can see, but the, the difference is in energy consumption. I mean, let's be green. Let's start to be, let's, let's become green is massive. If I go in some countries, you know, and then you say, well, why did you do here one and a half inch piping? Dominic, because this is what I have in stock. This is not the reason, ladies and gentlemen. This mm -hmm. is not the reason. This is not acceptable. This is not right. And I mean, you do what you want, uh, but uh, this is wrong. Please, please consider this. Ta tell this to your end user and he will be happy to pay you an extra 200. Was this clear enough? A little bit too emotional? No, 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 I mean, no, no really. I'm, you can do here something good for, for, for us. It doesn't change, ladies and gentlemen. For us, it doesn't change, but it changed something in the system and you do something for the environment. So please do it. Yeah. Okay, Philip, you take this. Yeah, so this we have seen before the importance, uh, you know, of backwash velocity. The pipe, backwash pipe should never go up. Yeah, Always so go first, down. enough that we, have, we can backwash the filter and always go down, right. never go up. And this is in, in this. This is an Italy. Stefano, if you, you remember, uh, or I was with Matteo here. Uh, so, you know, very nice installation, but they go up. This is wrong. You see, this is the backwash line, you know, with the glass. They go up. This is wrong. Always go down. Always go down. Uh, not in play quickly this. We want to see this. This is also in Italy. Stefano, this was with you in Naples, remember? This is sand, this is not AFM, but this is what we want to see, side glass and that we see bad expansion when we are backwashing. And this you don't see if you don't have the correct piping. And here comes now my favorite. Um, 
Here what you see is a, a filter from a, a manufacturer called Astropur. Maybe you have heard of, of it. I think it's quite a famous one. Yeah, so you see them everywhere. Very good filters, very good filters. You know, filter diameter here is two meters and you can have it with one meter of 1.2 meters of filter bed height, which is not important. But what is important, you can buy these filters at a 20 cubic meters per hour per square meter filters. We learned this in the last session. This is 20 meters per hour filtration velocity or 30 or 40 or 50. Now, you learned in Dryden, yeah, I want, I want to have a very low velocity and then maybe you choose this one here, the red, which is exactly the same filter like this one here, the 50 meters per hour, it's just the pipe sizes. The pipe size here is here 160 millimeter outside, EN 150 inside, and here it's 110 EN 100 inside. Problem is, if you want to backwash now this filter, let's assume we have sand as we have seen before. And let's say you want to do it only with 50 meters per hour. You get to a pipe velocity of 5.5 meters per second. If you go in this filter, you can backwash. Uh, well, we quickly check the velocity. 50? I forgot this. Yeah. 150, 150, yeah. Yeah, 2.4. 2. It's still it's still acceptable. Oh, it's written up here, huh? No, it's not written no. up here. Uh, anyway, what's the takeaway of this? Dear filter manufacturers around the world, dear distributors, you know, all my friends in Belgium and the UK and in Asia, please do not, first group, do not manufacture these filters. This is wrong. This is should be forbidden. This is red. This is this is shit. This is wrong only sell these filters because it's not just to filter. This works perfect for filter if you never have to backwash this filter. You know, you always change the media, then this is great. But the moment where you have to backwash your filter media and you will need 50 meters per hour, this is forbidden. This is forbidden. Don't do it. Even don't produce it. Even if people uh, are, are ordering, don't sell it. Go for this. This filter you can filter at 20 meters, you can filter it at five meters, at one meter, but you need to backwash it at 50 meters per hour. And this is why you need this. So this is wrong and please stop doing it. It's just completely wrong. You know, Dominic, you always get so emotional yeah, and sorry upset for that. when he sees a bad filter. So please do not sell bad filters. No, okay? the filters is great. It's just the wrong connection. And I cannot understand how you can do it. You know, maybe the, the customer asks, but really also you, the distributors, you have a responsibility here. Don't do this. Sorry. Next one. I think you drove the message home. Okay, good. Here's another good example. Yeah, uh, this is an excellent example. From our uh, friends in Germany here. Yeah. And it's not, do we like, do we love Benke more than Astral? I guess we do. No, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, the, in Germany, they ask for a pressure-free backwash. And they go, same filter diameter, they go with DN250, not DN150, and not DN100. Which then gives a pipe speed of 0.9. Yeah. This, of course, is perfect. Yeah. This also costs more. In, in, it's, I wouldn't say it's needed. It's perfect if you do it. But uh, this year, this year also is uh, is okay, acceptable if you stay with the two meters per second. And the last thing, ladies and gentlemen, the price difference between the red shit here and the green, which is okay, it's two hundred euros or three hundred euros, not more. So it's a no-brainer, really. Uh, don't disappoint us. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Okay, um, as I, I said, we always wanted to, to, to talk about real cases. Yes. This is one that was in Belgium. They had problems with nice pool, but they had problems with combined chlorine. It was with sand and they asked, can you do something with AFM? And uh, I went there and uh, had a look. And uh, to be honest, we didn't do the project. We said, no, we can't, we can't do it. Why? This pool had two pumps, 5.5 kilowatt each, so together 11 kilowatt, you know, and if your piping is good, usually out of one kilowatt, you get something between 10, if not 20 cubic meters per hour, right? So this is also what they saw. They had two very nice pump, hair partner pumps in, in, in Germany, you know, and the pumps are great. And they thought, well, with these two pumps, you know, we get, uh, we get, um, 
what is here, mi minute? That's wrong, minimum. Uh, yeah, minimum. we get minimum 100 cubic meters per hour to backwash this filter because the filter has a diameter of 1,600. This is two square meter. So if you want to backwash this filter, we need 100 cubic meters per hour. The piping was done in four inch, the N100, D110. And this gives you a speed of four meters per second. Huh? So you see piping is four inch instead of six inch. Then they also had here a, a very nice strainer, very expensive strainer, but only four liter, uh, much, much too low. And you see, you know, how many fittings they had here, one, two, three, four, five, you know, they, they made, they broke, tried to break the, the world record in installing uh, 90 degree angles. And, uh, you know, what, what, what was really the problem, really the small, the, the strainer was so small, you know, if they had, he, he told me, Dominic, always if I have two pumps running, I get air in my filter. That means it, it goes in cavitation. This is where you get air in it. So if you get all the time air in it, think about if you am in cavitation. Of course, the speed in the pipe was much too high, much too, too many fittings, and this ended in, in the following. If they run the system with one pump, you get here to the black numbers, 50 cubic meters per hour, which is low, but yeah, it's okay. If they added the second pump, another 5.5 kilowatt, it's a massive pump, they got 54. This is four cubic meters more. You know, they could add another 100 kilowatt, it wouldn't change. And it was the strainer, it was the piping. I mean, just as an example, only this T, you know, this T. And again, you could make the calculation with the lambda and all the stuff we showed you. Only this T, at this speed, four meters per second, you get a pressure loss of 120 millibar, one T. If you would do it correctly, two meters per second, it would be only 30 millibars. I think that's four times less. That's four times yes, less. Haven't we heard so, that before? Huh? No, this, this is a shame. It's a shame that we, we this is more than five kilowatt. You know, usually, you know, to, to get to, to, uh, to, to I mean, it's, it, this is just not working. Yeah. So we didn't touch it. Uh, it's still running on yeah. sand and still on the high yeah. combined chlorine. Yes. Philip, that's China. So, yeah. So here's another example that we brought home from China, from our uh, distributor DSL. They did not do this installation, but they brought us to this pool. Uh, it was a 1.2 meter diameter filter with a connection of a DN50. Uh, so backwash velocity, uh, 45 meters, we uh, require a, a volume of 50 meter cubes, and that gives us a pipe velocity of 7 meters per second. So uh, the pipe diameter is way too small, uh, driven through the multiport valve, the 2-inch multiport valve, and you can see this here if we put the, the pressure uh, drop here on the curve. It's impossible to backwash this filter impossible you never huh? win this war you never win this war yeah a last one that i want to show you uh philip uh, uh took me once to singapore we had a really good time he was on the show and on the bar enjoying and talking with the customers <laughs> and sent me out on uh, some of the installations so one of the installations you see a really nice pool on top of, of singapore they had four nice pumps installed you don't see it really well that we quite dark but four pumps again 5.5 kilowatts so together 22 kilowatts and then they came in a piping, really well dimensioned to DN200 and went to, I don't know how many filters, but at least four diameter, uh, 1.2 or maybe one. So uh, still okay, all okay. Uh, three, three inch multiport valve, so also okay, or maybe two and a half. So, so okay on that side. You know, and I asked uh, the people, uh, you know, uh, what's your turnover rate? And I said, well, uh, it's, it's six hours or, or something like this. And I said, and how many, uh, 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 what's the flow rate? And I said, yeah, it's, it's 200 or, or 300 cubic meters per hour. So I looked in this and then I went on. After the filters, again, you go in 200 millimeter pipe and from there you go in two 90 millimeter, right? So if that really would be 200 cubic meters, you know, the design flow rate they had in mind, you would end up with six meters per second of speed. And then this 90 millimeter goes in a return line in four returns like two inch. And that would be seven meters per second. And, you know, I told, 
sorry, sorry, but I believe you are well below 100 cubic meters per hour. And I said, no, it can't be true. Look at the big uh, pumps and said, yeah, but the piping, it can't work. By the way, also a project that we have not done. And then by chance, I have seen, and it was top on, on, on one of the, uh, the, the flow, on the main flow. I have seen there is a flow meter, one of the, the nice, simple uh, blue and white. And I even could not read it. So I put up my, my handy like this and made the photo. And here you clearly see 800 liters per second, which is 48 uh, cubic meters per hour. So what's the takeaway? With 22 kilowatt, they had a, a flow rate of 48 cubic meters per hour. And they made a good installation, just not the, the, the last thing. And that killed it all. Yeah. That really killed it all. You know, they get now to a turnover rate of 24 hours. They killed it all. So please don't do this. Uh, follow our rules and everything will be good. You know, for to, to have 48 cubic meters per hour, you need usually three kilowatt, not 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, next subject. We have a little bit yep. Let's, uh, Again, we delayed. need to speed up here. Oh, so this is my pool, this by is the way. Your pool. Yeah. Good. Okay. So here's talking about overflow pools. So we're talking overflow pools. This is another example from China. We had uh, the Beijing uh, Hilton where we were invited to visit two complaints. Yeah. One so is first of all, uh, this was not, this is a very old installation yeah. and our partner DSL, they just changed the media and we're happy for this. And I think they're really good, but they said, Hey, the water is really clear, but we have two complaints, you know, water surface, right? Water surface, you know, especially if the people are using the pool just off the sound of his sound yeah, yeah. you always have a little bit of foam and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and oil on exactly. it. Exactly. And yeah. then they have constant under and overshooting of yeah. chlorine and pH. Yeah. Huh? And uh, is AFM, uh, why, why is AFM not making the surface? That was what number yeah, one. Yeah. And, and is, uh, is uh, AFM changing the parameters? Yeah. So we looked at it and. Uh, give me this one. You take this. Huh? And you take then the other one. Okay. So there were two, two reasons over and undershooting. You know, the, the, the turnover time was eight hours and you had a pool in here. You had four inlets on this side and just on the other side, you had two main drains. And if you bring in here to water, it takes eight hours until you reach here, you know, and the, until it gets back to the, the, the dosing system, to the analyzer, it's eight hours. So if you dose here chlorine, until you see the reaction, it's eight hours. And mm -hmm. this is why you have overshooting and vice versa. Yeah. But the other thing, you explain. <laughs> you know, because of the, the, the surface. Yes, so yeah. the other thing is we uh, went to the technical room and we were looking for a balance tank. At yeah, first we did not, but we couldn't understand. Yeah. And we looked for quite a while and then finally we asked, where is the balance tank? And the answer was, well, we don't have one because we don't have space for it. Yeah. So it's very squeezed and it's acceptable, but it, yeah. So this pool was not overflowing. Yes. And you have to understand, you know, the top, you know, uh, in, if you look in the pool, the best water quality, the drinking water, the, the, the filtered and disinfected water is here. And the most polluted water so is top, here yeah. on the top. This is why this has to overflow and not just 5% or nothing. You know, they had here, they just use it for the splash water, which directly went to the drain, you know, so they, their hydraulic was come in here and go out here. And of course it's a very poor hydraulic. It's not mixing and especially it's not covering here the surface. Right. You know, if, if you have this system, if you can't do, do a, a, a balance tank, uh, if you don't have the budget, do skimmers yeah. and skim it. Yeah. So that was really, that was really uh, the problem. Okay. And uh, if we talk about the uh, balance tank, uh, let's come to this. Let's talk about overflow. So this is all clear now. Also DS pool, honestly, you know, it's amazing what they improved, you know, in the last four years, you know, when we started, great. you know, it's great. great yes. You know, in the beginning, to be honest, their pool designs were, were, were not the very best. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they are on, on, on German pool. standards, sometimes higher. So really they have done uh, an amazing job. Let's talk about, here we give you now two tricks, how to save money for your customer and uh, uh, money and energy. Let's talk first about the money. You know, you have two possibilities to backwash a pool, an overflow pool. Possibility one is you, sorry. Possibility one, you do 
as most people are doing, you take the water from your balance tank and you backwash your filter and, and job done, right? But second possibility is you take your backwash water directly from your pool, ideally through two or three main drains. You know, you can do this here with this uh, Besco valve or any valve, butterfly valve, doesn't matter, but you just take the water from the pool. Because with this, you will have three important advantages. Advantage number one, this water here is the best water. It's drinking water if you work with a daisy system. It's the very best. This is the most polluted water. Here you get all the shit in. So it's much better to backwash your, water, your pool with a clean water than you do it with a dirty water. Yep. Huh? Number two is you get here a geostat. Yeah, you can. Geo Geostatic pressure. Here yes. is yeah. geo, geo. geostatic pressure, yeah. okay, of two or three meters. That's the height of the pool to, to, to the filter. So that improves your, your backwash, your backwash, yeah. your backwash velocity. And the number three is, and that's probably really important for you, you can make your balance tank smaller. Philip will explain this to us. Dramatically smaller. Dramatically which smaller. Saves a lot of money. So we have two calculations. I'm going to make this very short because we're running out of time. Yep. What you need to know here is there are four variables that define uh, the amount of water you need in a, in a backwash tank. So this is backwash water that you will need to properly backwash your filter, your water displacement from bathers. Roughly 75, 75 liters. liters. I'm the 100 liter. Yes, he is the 75. 75, I guess. Then displacement from blowers uh, and water attractions. You know, especially if you're a blower, you blow off, you, you, you lift the water by two, three, four centimeters, and that's immediately going in your overflow and balance tank. And your water displacement from the cover. Yeah, that's right? about 10, uh, 10 millimeters, yes. one centimeter. You know, if you open your cover, that will uh, uh, bring more water to your balance yes, tank. Exactly. And if you then jo directly jump in and start your water attractions, so it's a little bit debatable yes. if you need this. So if we do this calculation with a pool 10 by 5 meters and a filter that's 800 millimeter diameter, you will be able to calculate these numbers. Yeah, huh? and this is really, I mean, 800 millimeter filter would be a good filter yes. for this. That would be 2,500 liters just for the filter to backwash the filter. And the other, you know, a little bit up, a little bit down, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But you get to a net volume that you will need of 4,500 4, liter. Now, because you need a little bit of reserve, otherwise you get too much of water and yep. it will escape through your overflow, uh, yeah, emergency yeah, overflow, yeah, yeah. or you cannot go too much down. You can't drop, you can't uh, uh, suck the, the last drop out of it. So that's why to put a little bit of safety yeah, margin. That's the safety margin. Yeah. But you can also just rule, use a simple rule if you take 10 centimeters per meter square of surface Which of is your pool, 100 liter water, 100 liter, that equals 5,000 liters, apply the safety margin of 1.3 equals 6,500, very close to this calculation. So you see, very complicated, uh, compli uh, very complicated calculation, and again, a simple Dryden rule, exactly. which works pretty good. So now the same calculation uh, for a pool without pulling the water from the balance tank. Yeah, okay. so first we have seen the standard, have everybody does it, all the yep. world, and here comes the Dryden solution. Yes. Same calculation here, method, with the exception that we don't use water from the balance tank, so this is zero because we take the water from directly from the pool. Same size pool here, same simple rule, but now we can reduce, instead of 10 centimeters, we can reduce to six centimeters or 60 liters per meter square. Same safety margin equals about 4,000 liters. You can see it's very close number. Very close number. But now we are talking about a balance tank of 4,000 liters instead of 7,000 liters. And you can calculate 1,000 euro or let's say 500 euro. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's, it's massive. It's a massive uh, uh, investment and less space and whatever. And all you need is a, is a three-way three valve. If you go for a Besco valve, yeah. you know, uh, two inch, we are talking about six, seven hundred euros. That's it's it. nothing, or eight hundred, or one thousand euros. It's nothing. 
Okay, if you have this, you also can do uh, a last thing. You know, that's something which I invented, honestly, a few years ago in 2003 when we bought BESCO, and this is what we call the energy saving mode. And let me quickly explain how that works. You know, what is the idea? I explain it for an outdoor pool. You know, if it's nice and sunny, you see here 30 degrees of temperature, we are overflowing. We have a good hydraulics, we are using the pool, we are enjoying it. But now in nighttime, now we have night temperature only 10 degrees, we are not overflowing. Daytime again, we are overflowing, you know, because of better hydraulic, because it's nice. Nighttime, not overflowing. We are not overflowing. And that makes a massive difference, a massive difference in energy uh, consumption. So, Again, uh, daytime, overflowing, having a good hydraulic, running also your variable speed pumps at the medium uh, um, speed. Nighttime, not over, sorry, nighttime, not overflowing, running your pump at the low speed also to get uh, even more uh, energy savings, but still have your heat run, your, your, your heat uh, pump, etc., on. So you see here, warm and nice overflowing, nighttime not overflowing, but still infiltration because we, we want to have 24 hours filtration. Remember session number right. one, that's, that's the system. What makes a difference? You know, you will save, I wrote here 10,000 kilowatt hours per season. This is 1,000 liters, this is equivalent like 1,000 liters of oil. I have not seen one installation yet, ladies and gentlemen, where it was less than this. I've seen many, or it was two times or three times bigger. And this for indoor and outdoor pools. And let me explain you why this is. Because imagine you have 30 degrees of water temperature, your night temperature is 10 degrees, then your pool will look like this. Okay? Now you come and say, no, Dominic, I have a cover. I have a cover, it does not look like this. Yes, true, your pool is covered, but not your overflow. Your overflow is not covered, right? And this is this system, the, this eco mode system dries out your channel. And you know, the channel is about 20% of the surface. So if you have a 50 square meter pool, your channel surface is roughly 10 square meter. And this is where you warm water outside, it's cold 10 or five or even less. It's overflowing and you see in the channel how how you see the evaporation. If you go to the Beska movie, the old Beska movie, you see my pool yeah. world, you see it like this. And why is this? This is because of, uh, you want to explain this? Or I do it? I do it because it came from me. You know, this is evaporation. Now we can go to physics, you know, to, to heat up one liters of water by one degree, you need one kilocalorie. One kilocalorie to heat up one liter of water by one degree. This is the definition of one kilocalorie. But if you want to evaporate one liter of water, to change it from liquid to gas, you need 450 kilo kilocalorie, so 500 times more. And you maybe explain the... Uh, the yeah, so we, we all know how this feels, because when you walk out of the shower and you're wet, then you feel chilly. Why is this? Because the water is pulling energy from your body because it wants to evaporate. That's the exact same effect here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And this, I can tell you, we have, uh, we have something where you can calculate. This is true for indoor pool, for outdoor pools, but it's also true for indoor pools. We have a, a system on uh, www.besco.ch that you can download and have a look or call you, you, you guys and they yes. will explain you. But in indoor pools, you know, if you have 10 hours eco mode, or 12 hours eco mode, 12 hours overflow mode, your dehumidifier will work only 12 hours, roughly. If you run it all the time in the overflow mode, it will run 24 hours. Yes. And that makes a difference. Okay. So we're coming to the end. Yep. We're summarizing session three in three simple steps. You do it. I was yes. too long. Okay, good. So step number one, length, speed, and turbulence is what is important. If you slow the speed, by a factor of two, then the pressure loss will go down by a factor of four. That's number one. Number two, use the Dryden ruler, right? Suction side always one to 1.5 meters per second, pressure side 1.5 to two meters per second. You're brainwashing them, yeah? Yes. And step number three? 
Make smart energy savings using the eco mode. And backwash your, your pumps directly from your pool. Yes. Okay, next one. We have to hurry up. This is the outlook for session four. Yeah, it will be, again, really interesting. We will talk about biology and filters, disinfection byproducts. We will talk about trichloramine and THMs. We will talk about chlorates. It will be a good one. So please join us on this. Yes, great. So you can stay online for uh, to see us answer the questions. Yep. If not, we will see you again in...